Hi everyone, Jason Kirk here from the Optical Imaging and Vital Microscopy Corps at the Baylor College of Medicine. Today we're going to discuss how to properly use immersion objectives on our inverted microscopes. We're going to show you how to safely mount your specimens using an oil immersion objective and provide some tips and tricks to help you keep your samples and our microscopes safe. Before we get into the practical use of these lenses, let's start off by discussing a bit about why we need to use immersion optics in the first place. When choosing an objective for our experiments, one of the most important questions we have to ask ourselves is, what resolution do we need to properly analyze our specimen? For example, if your goal is to analyze the distribution of tumor cells within the adult mouse brain, your resolution requirements will be quite different from someone whose experiment requires measurements of dendritic spine morphology. Understanding the size of the objects you wish to analyze will help you determine how much resolution you need from your microscope. The resolution of a microscope can be expressed through the Rayleigh criterion and is equal to a constant 0.61 times the emission wavelength of our fluorophore divided by the numerical aperture of the objective. You can see from Rayleigh's calculations that the numerical aperture of the objective lens has the largest overall impact on the resolution of our microscope. The NA is the measure of the light gathering ability of the lens. The higher our objective's NA, the higher the resolution of our microscope. The NA of our objective is calculated by N times the sine of alpha, where N is the refractive index of the medium between the cover slip and the front lens of the objective and alpha is the sine of the half angle of the cone of light collected by the lens. Physics limits the maximum cone of light collected by any lens to less than 180 degrees. And since the sine of 90 degrees equals 1, the maximum Na of an objective is heavily dependent on N, or the refractive index of the medium between our cover slip and the objective. In fact, even the most modern objective designs can only collect a cone of light spanning approximately 144 degrees. The sine of this half angle would at most be the sine of 72 degrees, which equals 0.95. When we use a dry objective that is designed to image in air, which has a refractive index of 1, the maximum Na possible would be, you guessed it, 0.95. According to the Rayleigh criterion, the best resolution we can achieve with this Na would be approximately 350 nanometers. If our experiments require a higher resolution than this, We'll need to use a lens that is designed to use a higher refractive index medium between the cover slip and the objective. This is where immersion optics come in. Immersion optics are lenses that are designed to work with a higher refractive index solution between the cover slip and the front lens of the objective. This solution can consist of a variety of substances, from water, which has a refractive index of 1.33, all the way up to oil, which has a refractive index of 1.518. The higher the refractive index of the immersion medium, the higher the Na of the objective. To appropriately choose an immersion objective for your experiments, it is important to consider what type of medium your specimen will be mounted in. To achieve the calculated resolution of an objective, the refractive index of the immersion fluid required by the lens ideally must match the refractive index of the specimen. Now for most biological specimens, a perfect match is impossible. Lipid bilayers in cell membranes combined with unpredictable morphology means that any refractive index matching will always be a compromise. For example, if you are imaging live cells in culture media, where the refractive index is 1.33, the preferred objective would use water immersion. If you have tissue sections that are mounted in prolonged glass, for example, which has a cured refractive index of 1.52, an oil immersion objective would be the best choice. Here is a list of a few common mounting mediums and their refractive indices, along with respective immersion fluid recommendations. You can see that many of these mounting solutions have refractive indices somewhere between oil and water. So we want to choose an objective that comes as close as possible to the refractive index of your mounting medium. The OIVM core's microscopes are typically outfitted with three immersion objectives. The first is a C. apochromat 40x 1.2 Na objective designed to image with water immersion. Our microscopes are also equipped with 40 and 63x plan apochromat objectives, both with a 1.4 numerical aperture. These two objectives use oil for their immersion fluid. You might be tempted to use an oil immersion objective with a specimen mounted in an aqueous solution. The oil lenses have a higher Na, so they should give you better resolution, right? 
Remember that the theoretical resolution calculations assume that the refractive index of the immersion fluid matches the refractive index of the specimen. If there is a mismatch, this difference will increase spherical aberration and reduce the overall resolution of a lens. This will be especially problematic in thicker specimens. As you focus deeper into tissue, artifacts from spherical aberration increase much faster when you have a refractive index mismatch. Here is an example of spherical aberration where the image on the left has a mismatch between the immersion fluid and the mounting media. Spherical aberration often manifests as a softness in focus, and the resulting image will appear a bit hazy or fuzzy. Compare this to the image on the right, which is the same cell taken with an objective that properly matches the refractive index of the mounting solution. The takeaway message here is that you should choose an objective whose required immersion fluid matches the refractive index of your specimen as closely as possible. Once we've properly selected an objective for our experiment, let's discuss how to mount our sample correctly using immersion fluid. In this example, we're going to discuss mounting a slide using an oil immersion objective. Our slide has a tissue section embedded in a high refractive index mounting media. This mounting media has a cured refractive index of 1.52. So in this example, we will use the 40X 1.4 oil objective. Ensure that there is no sample holder mounted on the stage and that the area around the objectives is clear. To select the correct objective, locate the TFT display to the right of the microscope and make sure you are selected on the home screen. On the left hand side of the display, click on the microscope tab. From the control tab, select objectives from the top menu, then select 40x oil from the objective list. This action will move the objective focus down away from the specimen plane and then rotate the turret to the objective you chose. If a dry objective was in place, the TFT will display a notification warning you that you are about to move from a dry lens to an immersion lens. This mechanism protects the objectives from coming into contact with immersion fluid if they are not designed for it. It is very important that you take great care to keep dry lenses dry. They are not sealed like immersion optics, so you can easily cause expensive damage to these lenses by getting oil or water on them. Do not under any circumstance move the objective turret from a low magnification dry objective to an immersion objective without first removing your sample. With no specimen in place, it is safe to click done. If the objective moves its focus back up toward the specimen plane, we will need to adjust it. From the right side of the TFT display, click load position to move the objective to the lower limit of the focus drive. Then click set work position. This is the safest place for the objective while we mount our sample. To mount our specimen, choose a sample holder that can be inserted into the universal slot on the motorized stage. Mount this sample holder as discussed in our previous microscope training. Before we mount our slide into the sample holder, we will need to add a small drop of immersion oil to our cover slip. Whenever possible, we try to apply the immersion fluid to the sample rather than directly on the objective. This way we can avoid potentially scratching the lens while applying the oil. Locate the bottle of immersion fluid labeled Immersol 518F. Depending on the microscope you are using, you may notice that there is more than one bottle of immersion fluid. On our AeriScan microscope, two bottles of immersion oil are generally available. One will have a sticker on the cap of the bottle with the number 30 printed on it. This is a variation of the Immersol 518F that is designed to work at 30 degrees Celsius, or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll recall from our confocal training that we recommend closing the incubation chamber when using the AeriScan to prevent air currents from disturbing our imaging. When we close this chamber, the ambient temperature inside will rise slightly above room temperature. Most immersion oil is designed to work at 23C, so any increases or decreases in temperature will have an adverse effect on the refractive index of the immersion fluid. For traditional confocal imaging, small variations in refractive index will likely not be detectable. Super resolution imaging with the AeriScan is a different story, and the performance of the AeriScan can be degraded by these small changes. So if you're using the AeriScan, choose the 30 degree Immersol 518F, and remember to close the incubation chamber for imaging. For confocal or wide field imaging, you can use the regular Immersol 518F. Unscrew the cap from the bottle and slowly extract the applicator tip connected to the cap. You'll notice that there is often just enough oil in the bottle to cover the tip when closed. 
We underfill these bottles purposely to reduce the amount of oil initially on the applicator. This discourages users from over-applying any oil. Load the tip with just enough oil to form a small bead at the end of the applicator. Ideally, when holding this applicator at a 45 degree angle, you want just enough oil to hold a bead without dripping off. You should be able to move this applicator around freely without the oil dripping off. Please be very careful to not get this solution on the outside of the bottle, or on your hands, tables, or anywhere else other than your cover slip. Immersion fluid is a category two skin irritant, so please be very careful. Touch the bead of oil to the cover slip and then quickly remove the applicator. If you are using tissue sections or a specimen that you can see by eye, position the drop of oil directly over the section. This way, when you start positioning your slide, you know for certain that there will be some tissue in the field of view. Please make sure you place the bead of oil on the cover slip and not on the back of the slide. Ideally, you want a bead that is approximately five to six millimeters in diameter. Invert the slide and place it into the sample holder on the microscope stage. Your cover slip and oil bead should always be facing the objective. Gently close the specimen clamps so the slide is held snugly in place. This is important because if the slide is loose in the sample holder, friction caused by the oil between the cover slip and the objective can cause unintentional movement when positioning the sample. This will reduce the reproducibility of the stage. Use the joystick for the motorized stage to center the bead of oil over the top of the objective lens. Begin rotating the coarse focus knob towards the microscope to bring the objective closer to the specimen. While observing the bead of oil on the slide, continue focusing up until you see the oil just touch the objective lens. When you see the oil touch the objective, immediately stop focusing. Now we can move the transmitted arm back down and begin visualizing our sample in the eyepieces of the microscope. Navigate to the Locate tab in the Zen software and turn on the epifluorescence channel you wish to use for focusing, as instructed in our previous training videos. We recommend selecting a channel where you expect the most fluorescence. For many that use DAPI as a nuclear marker, this channel is a common choice. The human eye is much more sensitive to green range wavelengths, however, so if you know you have good labeling in the green channel, this is our preferred option. Since oil is now touching the objective, our focus position is very close to where it needs to be, so from here we will only use the fine focus knob on the microscope. Do not use the coarse focus with immersion objectives from this point on. Have a look through the eyepieces of the microscope. If you position the bead of oil over a section, you will likely see some residual autofocus fluorescence from the tissue. Begin slowly rotating the fine focus knob towards the microscope. As you slowly adjust the focus, you should see the entire field of view starting to get gradually brighter and brighter as you get closer to the specimen. Take a moment to pause and shift your attention to the microscope stage. Watch what happens to the oil drop as the objective gets closer to the cover slip. You should see this oil drop gradually expand as you focus closer. Back in the eyepieces of the microscope, you should start to see the outline of the specimen. Continue focusing until the image is sharp. Be very careful at this point. If you do not see the bead of oil expanding while you are focusing the objective closer to the specimen, immediately stop and make sure that you did not go too far. If you focus too close to the cover slip, the oil bead will stop expanding and this is an indication that the objective has made contact with the slide. If this is the case, slowly reverse the fine focus until you see the oil bead retracting in size. Then repeat this process. When your image is in focus via the eyepieces, have a look again at the microscope stage and observe the oil drop. Oil immersion objectives have a very small front lens, which is the tiny black dot in the center of the objective. There is an outer ring machined into the tapered tip of the objective surrounding the front lens. This machined well is our oil reservoir. Our bead of immersion oil should fill this well when the specimen is in focus, but not greatly exceed the diameter of the reservoir. If the oil bead is much larger than this well, oil will begin to run down the side of the lens and potentially damage it. If the bead is smaller than the well, but still covers the front lens, 
This will work, but when you start to move the stage to different positions, you might have trouble with the oil covering enough of the lens. Practice adding just enough oil to fill the outer machined well, but be very careful to not add too much oil. Once we have our specimen mounted and focused correctly, we can use our motorized stage to move to different areas on the slide as necessary. High NA immersion objectives often come with very small working distances, on the order of a few hundred microns or less. So we need to be very careful about how far and how fast we move our stage. Immersion oil has somewhat high viscosity. So if you move the stage too quickly or over a very large distance, the oil droplet will slowly reduce its size as a portion of the oil is left behind during its travels. This is problematic for two reasons. The first is that even the best slides are not perfectly flat, so there's a chance that large movements will cause the cover slip to get too close to the objective. If the cover slip gets too close, the lens could be scratched, and we definitely don't want that. The second is that large, fast movements will increase the probability that our oil bead does not cover our front lens. If the oil loses contact with our lens, we will not be able to focus, so please go slow with the stage movements. In addition, please take care to not position the stage too close to the edge of the cover slip. This is especially true if you use nail polish to seal your specimen. The edges of the cover slip are sharp and can cause scratches. Nail polish can also come into contact with the front lens if we get too close. Please do not mount your sections near the end of the slide. The edges of the sample holders do not have enough clearance for the short working distance of these lenses, and any contact will certainly cause damage to the lens. As a general rule of thumb, try to stay as far away from the edges of your slide as possible. It is important to look at the objective every once in a while when you are positioning the stage to keep your bearings. When you are ready to change slides, we first want to move our objective to a safe position. From the right-hand side of the TFT display, click Load Position to move the objective to the lower limit of the focus drive. Then click Set Work Position. Remove your slide and replace it with the next slide you want to image. If you had enough oil to cover the outer reservoir on the last slide, do not apply additional oil to the new slide. There is plenty of immersion fluid left on the objective to image another slide. Place the new slide into the sample holder and position the stage. Repeat the steps outlined earlier for sample focusing. Only apply a new bead of oil to every other sample in your series. Always make sure that for each slide, you only have enough oil to cover the oil reservoir. If you have to travel very large distances, for example if you have a slide that has two adult mouse brain sections on it, we recommend that you move between the sections using the same method we use to change samples. Do not expect a single bead of oil to cover the distance of an entire slide. When your imaging session is done, we'll need to ensure that we remove any residual oil from the objective. We don't want you to clean the lenses, core staff will do that for you. However, we do expect you to wipe up any excess immersion fluid that remains on the objective. To wipe up excess immersion fluid, Tear off a piece of Wattman lens paper. Do not attempt to use Kim wipes, paper towels, or anything other than the provided Wattman lens tissue to clean excess oil. Hold the edges of the tissue and very gently run the paper over the top of the objective. Be careful not to put any downward pressure as you pass over the lens. The idea is to gently lap up any excess fluid, preventing it from running down the sides of the objective. If you did not get all the fluid, Repeat this process again with a clean area of the tissue. Make sure that you do not use the same area more than once. If any fluid was pushed off the lens onto the tapered portion of the objective, crumple up the Wattman tissue and gently wipe any excess away. Be very careful to keep the lens paper away from the front lens of the objective while you clean this up. It is perfectly fine for the objective to have a small amount of oil remaining on the lens as core staff regularly inspects and cleans lenses. We just don't want it to run off the side of the lens, as it can work its way down into the microscope if we are not careful. Once you have finished wiping up the excess oil, please leave the objective focus in the load position and close up the incubation chamber, as this keeps dust and debris from accumulating on our lenses. 
If you have any questions about this technology, or just want to discuss what options you might have for your own imaging experiments, please feel free to contact the OIVM Corps through our website or via direct email 